funny intro because this is fucking hilarious. This is Gwen Snyder, a white woman, trying to call me a person of color, uh, um, racist, and, I, and I'm and I'm half black here. So yeah, get all the oppression points in. Okay, are you guys ready? Quote this is from her. They're, she's talking about me. <laughs> They're already very nearly at full on calling Biden quote <laughs> lover without ever even bothering to pause and be <laughs> like quote oh right hating cops is supposed to be our excuse for being racist towards her end quote. So uh, they're uh, they're ready to call Biden an N word lover. Bitch, who the fuck are you? Who like, the wait. fuck invited? What the fuck are you no, talking listen, about? Why the listen. fuck are you on my page? Why are you on Twitter? Listen, listen, why are listen. you? Why are you? What are you doing? What? What? Listen, listen. What we need to talk about is how she. How did? How did she get from this image that you were calling him an N word lover? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like who is calling her an oh N word? Anywhere in this, in this where the post. fuck is are you getting that from, Gwen? Please, Gwen, who brought up oh the N word? Like, why are you oh, so quick? Genius. I knew yeah. that this was gonna be gold. I knew that this was gold, right? So that we struck gold. I knew it. Out the N word, and, and to weaponize it against this young man who happens to be black. You Okay, opening it up. Uh, we'll jump right in. Uh, some headlines. Um, Kamala Harris is Joe Biden's uh, VP. Um, oh. It's been announced uh, like a day or two ago, about three days ago or two days ago. What's your thoughts on that? <laughs> you know exactly what my thoughts are, bro. My thoughts are fucking... The people need to know what your thoughts are. It's just a. I think honestly, I think it, it was a very smart political move. That's my okay. The general takeaway is that it's it's a. Smart oh really? It's right smart. when the Black Lives Matter anti po, anti police protests have been going on, well, well, look, you pick a fucking cop to be your vice president. I think optically. I think uh, what other what other black person could he have picked? You know. Oh, so no, but exactly. No it's like, um, sadly, the only black woman available is a fucking cop. Exactly. <laughs> the only woman that's in power enough to be available is a fucking cop. Cop Mala. Cop no, I think Mala. that's so fucking funny that whatever absolute fucking pill brain fucking moron uh, decided that, or the people that got together and decided that that was... The, no, I guess that's the thing. Is like she is a black uh, woman, and uh, yeah, like, but and holy is, shit! Like is, in the mid, like right after, like all of the Black Lives Matter protest shit, anti police shit has been happening. You pick someone with a fucking with a with a record like that, kind of funny. Well, well you know, that's just you know, th there are just some lines that are they'll soft play with, they will soft cross these lines, and th when it comes to like. Uh, security and law enforcement that's just a line that they're not willing to cross and yeah and they made that clear when they you know when they nominated biden in the first place when they nominated top cop uh they're not coming after me and my wife biden you know so that, <laughs> that, that that's already a given and like we're, we're and like that's the way law enforcement works is that you just take it you take it uh <laughs> it is imposed upon you and you don't have a choice and that's the way. Uh, right. That's the way that we ensure uh, order in the state. And uh, I... yeah, go ahead. No, yeah, it's just something that like talk about tough pills to swallow. That like <laughs> <laughs> that like we cannot that we cannot. The left is unable to offer anything better than two cops. You know. Right. I don't even um... think Trump is as pro cop as <laughs> the Democratic <laughs> Party is. Which is like, yeah, and people, people, people will flip out as soon as you start to like bring that up. Where like t t Trump being as criminal and as suspect as he is, he's not that big into cops, you know. Like he's mm -hmm. not that he's not that big into order. Like he likes skirting the, the law, 
Meanwhile, right, we got Kamala harassing moms and their kids in their living room. Oh and- yeah, have have you seen that video? <laughs> have you seen that video of her fucking laughing while she's talking about Dude, like kidding. putting people in jail? That's the thing. She she is all about the theater of this stuff. She is. Oh, like- she's so scary. She is a scary. Dude. She's a scary person, dude. <laughs> she reminds me of my mom, bro. She reminds me of my family. Yeah, like a see. Yeah, I could well like see like my like my the like my black aunts and fucking like family that I have is like they're they would think that she they would make fun of Kamala in high school. <laughs> she, they would beat <laughs> Kamala up in high school, like fucking uh. Kamala is like she is literally like like I don't know I feel like um like obviously just look at her her policies and her politics but it's like if you want to get to that level you have to like turn yourself in to this you know like remember when she came on to the Breakfast Club and she was joking about how she used to smoke weed and shit oh my you god know? you know like I like, I, I, like, I haven't heard that clip again I need to listen to it again oh it's pretty funny but uh it's like all of these people it's unimaginable actually but it's pretty but like all of these people were once normal people like normal kids like normal teenagers or young adults Mm -hmm. and then it's just like you can just see it in these fucking people's eyes like that it is um like i don't know if they they have to turn themselves into these these kind of like fucking these like monsters really i mean uh and that's the thing is like this is completely contextual like 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 a lack of context um if you just don't know like all of the like horrible like really what goes on behind kamala harris's politics and it is literally the most disgusting thing to see people celebrate her and it's just like oh my god she literally act like actively stands for everything that a lot of us oppose, you know. I think, I think specifically it's disgusting when people you're supposed to trust and people you're supposed to look up to as as far as, like, leftist role models or, like, people that are supposed to be um, thought leaders on, like, mm-hmm. leftist values adamantly and, like, and, like, um like with enthusiasm support Kamala Harris as if like oh it's it's fucking hurts man like one as if that it's really not like, like... The, a huge concession like as if it's like not a huge compromise of all of our values all of our values yeah oh my god like, Ava um, Ava what's it's her like, face you know it's so funny everyone is making the joke like um oh uh you know we gotta we gotta we gotta you know fucking change police or whatever we gotta abolish the police <laughs> And then those same people screaming, you know, a cab abolish the police are now like, okay, everybody, we got to vote for a cop. Let's let's all vote for a cop now. You know, well, here's like, the thing: a lot of these a cab people, and a lot of the these are the same people that um, we critique. These are the same people that we're making critiques of of the the Black Lives Matter movement as being too. Yeah, exactly. These exactly. are like this is this is the cancel culture sector of the group, and like they're and like yeah, I'm we're painting this in broad strokes and like. Over general and over generalizing it, but you get what I'm saying. I bet there are some people, yeah, right, like there are some. There's obviously like some people who are pro Black Lives Matter, and then now are also pro Joe Biden, Kamala Harris. Um, and then which is so funny because literally, literally, like Joe Biden, one of his worst policy, like one of his worst area and policies is, is prison, um, like policies and shit. It's actually like really, he's actually like really bad on that, and then like um like policies on like uh the war on drugs and shit like that um like they both have bad fucking uh policies literally in criminal justice and um yeah fuck it's it's actually pretty it's it's just so ironic because there are a large number of the black lives matter anti-cop type people that are now telling everyone to go fucking vote for joe well, biden come on it, it, but there are well, some people who aren't though of course i mean yeah there there are i think there are very few people that are vocally like this is bad and i think that like i think that like we, we can talk we'll, we'll get into the read stuff later but this is these are the same sectors of the of the movement that we're trying to make critiques of that are like so quick to elect cops and to to, to perpetuate <laughs> cop cop-like behavior 
You know what I'm saying? Like these are the same mm-hmm. people that are like um digging through and combing through every detail of every personal sexual encounter that you have and like making sure that you made every move by the book. And if you don't, mm-hmm. like your whole your whole like interpersonal relationship is now subject to public scrutiny. And like yeah. these are these are that's cop like behavior. And then, I know, and, right? And then all of those people are also pro Joe Biden, who has literally course. like fifteen sexual assault allegations. Bro, it's just so it backwards. is. It the is the ba- gym- yeah, it's so backwards. No, like the mental like, gymnastics these people have to do in order to like, like if you told this shit to aliens, like they literally would be like, okay, show me these people. Like there's no way this is, or just if you told someone this, okay, not aliens, or but like literally like fucking. Just someone that you know knows about like, politics like, slightly, but it's just from like a different country that you know they they keep up with like fucking Norwegian politics or whatever. And if you told them about American <laughs> politics, they'd be like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" It's just I so that, uh, twisted over here. I think aliens would would be able to make sense of it because they no, know they what could it, possibly they know, not. The listen, smartest listen. beings in the universe could not make sense to this fucking shit. They show. know they know how to be in more than one place at one time, so they. They probably can understand how we think. Oh yeah, too. exactly. You know, the, like, the, like, the omni, the omni brain. They they get it. Yeah, exactly. The om- omnipotous fucking force. <laughs> I mean, I, I was just talking to this. About, I was like talking about this with a friend that like she's she's had it with everything, and like she's just like the next thing has to be aliens. Like that is the only that is the next plausible. Like human beings have done everything that we possibly could. Like. We've exhausted everything to the point where it's just like now we're just making stuff up to film it and like call that reality. She's just like something really real has to happen, like aliens coming down. And I was like, I wasn't like you think aliens could come down and then see this whole Black Lives Matter, all these people that are so pro Joe Biden that will get in your fucking face and tell you that you are destroying like leftism and everything if you don't go out and vote for Joe Biden. While at the same time, Joe Biden, there's a fucking clear video of Joe Biden just openly saying the N word, <laughs> going around. All right, you want to get it? All right, that what, was what so your, fucking funny. What is your take on this N word business? I guess okay, N word business. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> because that that made me Obama, uh, Miss Obama, get down! Oh my god, I love I love okay. hearing the N word. I love thinking about the N word. The N word makes me excited. <laughs> it uh, <laughs> it reminds okay. me what it means to be a human being. That hearing the N word, so um, <laughs> you can you can well, imagine I mean, my excitement. Like, yeah, you know, like <laughs> we know what's super super funny. Like, um, I was thinking about like, okay, like yeah, like this is crazy. Like, um, like how are people gonna post this on YouTube? Because like when you post it on YouTube. And, like, you don't want to post the N-word on your channel or whatever. Uh, So, like, you're going to bleep it or some shit, you know, especially if you're making, like, ad revenue or whatever. Um, But I was thinking about the technology and, like, and, like, and, like, thinking about, like, film and, like, movies and, like, like, the difference between, like, reading something on paper and watching a clear, like, video of someone. Because it's just, like take all this frustration, take all this Black Lives Matter, this passionate, you know, like, if someone said the N-word, they'd get fucking obliterated in the middle of all this, like, passion of Black Lives Matter and all this shit. And then the the fucking guy himself, Joe Biden, I mean, the thing is, it's, just, it's so funny, like, um, it, you, you just think, like, oh my god, this is it, you know, like, remember when Joe Biden said, okay, bring it back to this, actually, like, um, okay, for people that don't know, I don't know, we'll link it or whatever, the video of Joe Biden saying the N-word, but, um, yeah, well, uh, open, well remember open. remember back remember when back whenever he came on the breakfast show and he was all like, "Oh, well, if you if you uh if you don't know oh, no, if you don't know that you should vote for me, then you ain't black, right?" Sure. Um and and everyone, man, it was the craziest thing. All my friends and, you know, when I talked to, you know, people and, you know, and also in like the black like leftist community or whatever, it was a consensus, a clear broad consensus that everyone was like, "Okay, this is over with. Joe Biden's over with." The black community we're strong. We're not going to let, like, we are going to, this, the Joe Biden campaign's over with. And then, you know, <laughs> I don't even think anyone fucking, I think like half of fucking black people in America haven't even seen that video, let alone care if what care that he said that. 
same thing with this inward video is like there's so many people sharing like oh my god like there's just no way he can go through all this shit and still get like all this black support but uh well what's your what so but what is your what is your take exactly on the on his use of the n-word because my take my take is you know what it what is there to have a take on it's just i'm more interested in like how there is such a such a act like a large number of people who um there's such a large number of people who are pro biden supporters but like if you really press them on that video and show them that video like to their face and to your face it's just it's just they'd be running in you know co- this this cognitive dissonance shit like these these contradicting beliefs like if you ask them hey would you support someone if there was a video of them saying the n word or whatever they'd be like fuck no black lives matter a cab what the fuck you know what the fuck are you talking about and it's like okay well here's this video of joe biden <laughs> but it's just like not everyone is going to be pressed like that you know not every voter in america is going to have someone press them like that, but my thing is, I'm just interested in the cognitive dissonance of it, and in, in, in the science of it, and 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 how so many other people. Because I don't fucking care, you know. I wasn't gonna vote for Joe Biden anyway. I'm interested right. in how there are so many people who, throughout all this, all of Joe Biden's sexual allegations, um, all you know, the in word the uh, shit, and and all these like controversial shits, and and he's still, you know, kicking ass, man. I mean, he he gets votes, dude. He's a popular guy, like he. He fucking kicked Bernie's ass, you know, so like this is no joke. I mean, these people are fucking in it. They're in it to win it, you know, and I think he might beat Trump. You know, I mean, there, there's just no way, even though Joe Biden is such a shit and Kamala Harris, like these people are actually shit candidates and shit politicians. But um, I still think they can beat Trump because there's just no way he can come back after a pandemic. He's just very the, the unluckiness of that to happen with you know uh under that like there's just no way that he's gonna so i i think i think biden's just gonna win because of the um because of the pandemic shit that people are 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 you know not liking trump because of the pandemic shit so they're gonna vote for biden but if it was not for that trump would fucking destroy biden and kamala especially with this black lives with the protest black lives matter shit like i was i'm actually i'm I'm wondering how that's gonna work out too how many um how many like hardcore Black Lives Matter people were gonna see say go vote for Kamala and Joe, the fucking police of the of politics? Well, that's the thing, yeah. And I, I I'm not one to uh, I'm not gonna make any hard predictions because it is a long time from November and lots of things can change from from yeah. There. There's no so way no. to tell. Of course, it's got like it really comes down to the theater of it and the moment and like and I, you already know how I feel about. The, the vote and like how this shit is all rigged anyway but going but to bring it back to joe biden and the n-word issue and like how the effect that it will have on the black the black vote or whatever i feel like his use of it in that clip if you watch the whole clip is like the only actual acceptable use of that word where he's reading it off a sheet of paper he's like he's it's a quote of somebody else and he's reading it he's reading it in court off a sheet of paper and he's like he read it out loud to, to, to make it a point how bad the word is, you know. So like, if if, if people do press him on it, I don't think that he. Also, have yeah, any I mean, shit. You at the very least, you could, Biden could just go, "Well, hell, goddamn, I was. This is back in like the 1980s or 1990s. Everybody was saying the word, uh, to not even using it, you know. And then everybody yeah, was saying the word in a bad way. So I bet he can get away with saying it." Even if he wasn't reading it off on a pa- on paper, I think I mean, that God, you, I think that man, if anybody got away can, with uh, the man got away with fucking saying, "Oh, you're not black." If you exactly, me, which is as no, an old white man. That's way, so that's obviously way no one gives a fuck. Yeah, the I'm not black thing is way worse, and the sexual, yeah, so the sexual obviously no one cares. The sexual allegations, I think, is so damning. And no, like, that's capitalist realism, baby. Is like explain, um explain. literally when you when I like like this ideology is so fucking pervasive in neoliberalism that it's like you will watch people literally tie their brains into knots in contradictions like literally flop um political like like things on their Instagram I'm talking about like passionate life changing like ah a cab Black Lives Matter like so there's such a strong like passion in this whole this media wave that just happened literally like a month ago. And you are seeing people switch on dimes, turn on fucking dimes. Like that, that's what freaks me out, actually. Like, like, you know, it, it all feels expected. 
but I am kind of worried about the future of America and kind of this, like, and also, you know, a lot of these people that I'm seeing, you know, these are 20 year olds, 30 year old, you know, these are, these are people that are going to be the next fucking 50 year old politicians and all that. And these people are very stupid. And, and, uh, <laughs> I, I was, I, my thing was, I just kind of was freaking out because it's like, no way people are actually switching their like political convictions, like, or things that they feel so passionately about that easily. That, that just doesn't seem natural. But I think it's because of like like social media is like information overload and everything's so fucking fast and everybody's changing political ideologies and fucking weeks and and views. So like this is this is why I think um, Kanye is like professed uh, you know friendship with Donald Trump is so interesting. Like looking back in retrospect, where we're seeing like people compromise everything they believe in just to just to be anti Trump. And then you uh-huh. con- and then you take that and you look at what Kanye's doing with like fuck all of that like I love Trump like he's my friend not in that not let not that like I accept everything that he believes in politically or like not that I believe that he's a, mo- a moral role model for me because that's left for Jesus he's just like n- nothing n- none of Trump's politics is going to make me compromise my values do you know what I'm saying? Like right. my relationship it, it, it with God. It would have been cooler. It'd be cooler if he did it uh, after Bernie dropped out. <laughs> well, bro, he was doing this before during Bernie was a thing. You know, like before. Uh, oh no, 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 no! Uh, Bernie was Bernie was huge 2016, and then Trump and then Kanye West and come out with the pro Trump shit. Well, like, look, Trump was Bernie, off Bernie wasn't Bernie. a perfect Bernie wasn't a perfect candidate then either, and Bernie needed to be pushed to the left, and and he still like was being pushed to the left. All you know what's the funny? End. He was way more like left, like non-liberal, like leftist and materialist leftist in 2016. He ran a way better campaign in 2016. And if he would have did the same thing he did in 2016, I also bet there would have been a chance that he actually had a chance to win the nomination. You, but that's a whole nother thing. I think you still think that like people's votes matter. That's what, <laughs> and that's the funny part is is like, you think that these people's campaigns matter and not like, like he could have run any campaign, but like anything that's uh, like like any we we've seen it happen with like the literal the literal people dead now because of their politics. Anything that's left and anything that's for working class people is not going to is not going to fly in a, in the electoral process the way that it's working right now. Like the electoral process right. serves corporate interests, um, and I don't think that anything like. It doesn't matter how far left he actually ran because that's not going to get through. But uh, but I guess we're talking about the difference between like the political game of it and like the actual like what left what what working class people actually want out of the policy. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I think right. that, well, I think that those are two, it's a different conversation. Well, yeah, but just to okay, yeah, we'll, 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 that's a whole another thing. But just to conclude on that is like. My 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 idea is that um burn like it's just there's not a hopeless factor to it. Like Bernie, if he could have did significantly better if he if he uh stuck to kind of some of the more materialist shit like he was in 2016. That's a whole nother thing. But um no, what was really interesting also that that uh came out um in the last um the last week was uh that New York Times article uh about Adolf Reed, which this oh, yeah. happened this happened uh like a while ago. So like to put this in context for everybody. Okay, so um Adolf Reed, I don't remember what exact time it was, but I know that to put it in my timeline, um the the talk that um he was going to give at the DSA convention, Adolf Reed, the talk he was going to give was about the coronavirus um and um so to timeline this for everybody to like you know historically (laughs) um because like just the last year fucking feels like like 10 years but like this 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 was happening um i don't know how long ago back but it was about the start of coronavirus i'm pretty sure and the speech and or the talk that he was going to give was about how we should quit focusing on uh like specifically black deaths or 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 the fact or the fact that like black people are specifically 
in danger and we should start focusing on more of like uh, working class people in general or people of color in general. Um, and just, you know, uh, the fact that coronavirus, like the, the, the biggest thing that it's going to affect is just people that don't have money. Um, and because of that, which doesn't seem very controversial to a literal, a literal fucking average person that lives in the fucking world that is not on Twitter every fucking day or like into this crazy liberal fucking fantasy that everyone's fucking in. But, um, to average people, this actually sounds very normal, (laughs) very normal and very reasonable, but a mob of these fucking DSA kids. Um, I, and there, I mean, just, I mean, I know that I know this because like literally 99% of DSA is fucking white. So a mob of mostly white DSA kids got together and said, no, we are going to cancel a black man's talk, a a black professor's talk, a black Marxist professor's talk at our event. Um, And why I'm really talking about this, because I've already kind of talked about this before when it happened and gave my opinion on whatever. So like, obviously my opinion is that that's kind of crazy. I think we should let Adolf free give his talk or whatever. Um, cause I don't think the opinion is very controversial. Um, but why I'm ta- we're talking about is today is because it got resurfaced because, a um, a New York times article came out about it. Um, and kind of basically just gave a really good article shitting on the whole thing. Just like how fucking ridiculous this looks. <laughs> How ridiculous this looks to any normal person outside of this little liberal fucking bubble. Right. And like, that's, it's funny seeing that New York Times put this out because they're so like. Oh, exactly. That's another thing. New York Times is a funny thing. And I haven't really wrapped my head around it because like, I don't spend my time fucking reading New York Times articles, even though all of my friends do and they pass them around and, and they feel good about themselves because they read new york times articles but you know but i i i do uh i do like think the politics that goes on there is kind of weird like uh i know that they have different writers with different views on there but like uh, yeah i I guess i just don't know like that's a it's a funny thing how those things work out where you can have an article like this that's like so well thought out and like supports our values but then the next day it'll like they'll be canceling someone you know right um yeah so it's just like their their viewer base i wonder how much of this will actually like connect with their base right um like new york times i guess like the biggest these organizations get the kind of like less like political like the less like they adhere to a specific political ideology so like like a more independent, you know, or I guess the idea is just like New York, like New York Times, their whole thing, their motto is supposed to be like, oh, we're the best in the world. And we're supposed to, we, we give like the whole idea of journalism is that it's supposed to be apolitical. It's supposed to just be the truth. Yeah, right? yeah. Obviously, we know that that's not the case, that all of these places are funded by people. Um, but yeah, that's the thing is just like very rarely, I guess, shit like this slips through the cracks. And a, a very a very nice detailed article uh came out. that's also interesting is like the, i had some friends tell me they're like what the fuck dude you're sharing a new york times fucking in the discord exactly, or whatever. exactly. and it's like no dude go give this a fucking read which <laughs> i think you should give new york times like dude there's plenty of good shit of uh in the new york times um i know i know I'm, I'm... but obviously it's a fucking horrid fucking like um I mean, ridiculous propaganda model where there's obviously like funding coming from 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 high end funders like institutions funding it um, that obviously have political goals um, in mind. But um, no, yeah, that is funny though. Yeah, but good on. Uh, I'm I'm just glad that more people know his name now than they did before. Like Adolf people- Reed, exactly, exactly, yeah. Yeah, I think he even talked with uh, Michael Powell, the guy who 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 wrote the article. Cool. Um, did, did you see? Uh, did you see the the latest video on, on the Intercept YouTube? Um, no. It was this woman talk, kind of talking about. She was kind of giving all the reasons why Alfred Reed is bullshit, kind of. About what? Adolf about Reed. Adolf Reed, yeah. 
about how what's bullshit about how uh so she she's just basically saying that the class reductionist critique of uh, of the movement is kind of bullshit because if you look at coronavirus a lot of the most the, the heavy the most hit demographic is black and brown people so, oh so it's a defending adolf reed no it's not, not that it's defending adolf reed it's that uh they don't understand why uh, they they like they were talking about how cancel culture isn't real and how um, focusing on black issues is more important now because of the pandemic because the pandemic is affecting black and brown people more than it is mm-hmm. than just poor people in general. But you know, I, I didn't really watch the full video. It was just uh, an interesting thing to see on the the intercept because the intercept has been super pro like anti cancel culture. But this woman, right. sort of, this woman sort of slept through the through the cracks, and she was like, "Actually, you know, race matters." You know, she she was the race matters sort of figure. And so it was anti Adolf Reed, <laughs> but not fully. It's not you know, it's not. I don't. I don't fucking believe in that. right, she, right. She right, clearly right. like. I think she clearly aligns with him. But well, if we think, if you didn't if we didn't if we didn't watch the whole video, we don't really know. But of course, but I um, think I think that I align with her in that like. I I align with Adolf Reed, of course, but like race does matter, and like it's just about a. There has to be balance. There has to be. You're balance. not ready. You're not ready to go full fash mode and throw race out of the window. You're not ready for that. Well, I, I mean, I've <laughs> go thrown, full Reed pilled. I've I've thrown race out the window in other aspects of my life, not just just not in the way I talk about politics. You know, and it's just a right. It's, it's about, such a fucking <laughs> mind fuck at this point. Like, it's gonna continue to be too. I guess literally, like, it's literally like it's like a it's like a um I don't know because I don't know if you really pressed me on it, I would just go okay. Well, everything starts from one thing that is universally clear. No matter if you're a liberal or or or, or anything or whatever, uh, you know, if you're on the left at, in any sense or you're a liberal. You know, uh, you should know that race isn't real. You know, it's like this, you know, fucking um, there is no genetic differences or whatever. So if that's the case, then I think we should throw this whole fucking race thing out of the out of the window. But then it, but my thing is like, look, my thing is like I've been you know, the whole thing is, you know, you have to be careful here. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, uh, where, you know, because I was like, man, you know, if you actually look at my politics, there's no way. Way. I should just be honest with with this thing or whatever. I'm, I'm anti. I should just be honest and tell people I'm anti identity politics in a whole. I think we should throw it all out the fucking window. But then again, I'm like maybe I shouldn't say that because literally a completely like visually black man is called a racist. Adolf Reed. He's visually black. You can tell he is black. He has black family. He is a black man, and he's called a racist. So if he is fucking cam, if he's able to get canceled. I'm definitely fucking able. So I don't know. My thing is just like, um, there's just, there's just literally like, there are just too many people who still kind of hold on to that. Like, it's like this, that, that ideology is so strong. You will just lose um, uh, some people. If you try to say a sweeping statement, like your anti-identity politics. Um, yeah, my thing is like, you know, what's funny is I've just been, I've just been more and more, like, cause at first I'm like, okay, intersectionality. Like, but I was always like class first, you know, that's, that's, that's easy. But, um, I've gotten more and more cynical with this thing because I have realized that it's actually, you know, or I, the, all that I have put together, only thing that I've seen is that this is leading us down a bad, you know, white fragility and all that shit. This is all bad. And that's like a whole nother, you can do a whole episode just about that book and how bad that fucking book is or whatever, but, and how useless it is. And it's actually hurting us. You should do a report on that. should. Well, it's also kind of like older and it's like, well, um, it was really hot to talk about whenever the Black Lives Matter shit was really well, just starting to pop off. We're not doing it because it's hot. We're doing it because it's important. And I, it's I, important. You, said, it's still- you said a lot of stuff too that I want to get to, but um, yeah, but I'm not worried about fucking trying to hit the, the hot clock. Because that shit's, you know, I'm always late for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, I'm never going to be on time for that. So, and the, right. people that, the people that are on t- on time for the hot clock, you know, they have a team of people watching the hot clock. And they fucking sit on that shit. Or they get paid a lot of money to do that shit, so. I, th- I think eventually we'll be, 
we are you getting paid to stay on the hot clock? But you also, uh, you said something uh, about uh, totally rejecting identity politics. Oh, yeah. And like, call me a fascist for it. Fuck it. I don't no, care. No, no, no. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to call you a fascist. But uh, you yeah, said I'm that sure. you're, you're afraid to do it because, uh, or you, you, you said that you show you have concern doing it because Alfred Reed got, uh, Adolf Reed got canceled for it. And I'm like, no, well, it, it, it's just like, it's just like Adolf Reed literally found himself where he said, oh my God, like never in my 60 years of life as a black man, was I having liberal, was I having little white kids run up to me and call me a racist? And he was literally like, yeah, I mean, this is a strange time. Like I'm in a strange, this is something strange is going on. Right. And I'm like, yeah, he's fucking right. Something is fucking strange going on whenever a white person can tell a black person that they're racist. So what is the so what is the solution to that then? Do the, do we do to we just, completely be anti id poll? That's the that's the solution is to be completely anti- reject completely reject this European notion of this like um, Anglo Saxon like you know idea of race. Completely okay, but reject. here's the thing. Here's the thing. You can reject it all you want, but the racists with so yeah race doesn't matter but racists matter you know what i'm saying race isn't real but racists are real and racists operate off the basis of their race being superior and like these are powerful people so you can you can reject it all you want like interpersonally and like uh ideologically for yourself philosophically but um there are still white people with guns who like <laughs> and you think yeah well they're just 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 like doing identity politics is going to do nothing for with, with uh, against the white people with guns um plenty of like black marxists that, SRA that type people that like 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 black people that own guns that think that they should be like or like the pro-gun people which i fuck with a lot of them all these guys are anti-id poll they don't fuck around these are like hardcore marxists or whatever those are going to be the people actually stopping white people with guns not fucking black lives matter people or any of like it's not about like it's not about Marxist stopping people. them it's not about stopping them it's about operating in the space that they're operating in you can't just you can't fully operate outside of the space that they are because that's just ignoring reality do you know what i'm saying like yes we know that race doesn't matter but like if i ignore the fact that someone thinks that if i, if I ignore the black that i'm seen as black to other people that's how you get in trouble because you can't, and that, that's what that's the whole thing. That's the whole thing with double consciousness is that you have to, yes, acknowledge that this is being imposed onto you, and that it's not real, but operate within it, operate within it, or like operate with, with the awareness that like your skin is darker than like you know your freer. Brother. Yeah, we're talking right because it, it, it's such a crazy because when you're dealing with an abstract notion, here's the thing: like when you're like. There are things that are less, that are more, that are less concrete than other things. You know, money, you know, it's all, I've always said it's a classic, you know, it's like, I don't know where I heard this from, but it's like, you can easily check someone's bank account and get an exact number of how fucking rich they are. You know what I'm saying? Um, you can't sure. test somebody's blood to see what race they are. That actually doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Um, Cause you know, race is not like a testable scientific thing. And um, so when you're, so, so literally race is by definition, more abstract and kind of like like more hard to talk about because you're talking about this kind of fake abstract thing um so it's like when when you're talking about something that's abstract like race it's complex and you, you can kind of end up talking past the or the or like like two, like two you know like the two dialectics can end up just going right past each other because there's nothing material to ground the conversation in you know what i'm saying but like to c- try to put some grounding to it, I would just say, like, at this point, I don't really give a fuck about symbolism. And, and like, this is what Beyonce comes in with, like, or that movie with, like, Black is King or whatever. That's all bullshit symbolism. Kamala Harris is bullshit symbolism as, like, you know, like, uh, Joe, um, Barack Obama is bullshit sy- uh, symbolism. You know, like, me and, like, my black family, like, half of my family, which is black, we want real material change. We don't give a fuck about symbolism anymore. So that's, I reject identity politics. I care about material change. So. I don't think I, you totally, I don't think you totally reject symbolism. I think, I think symbolism is, is hugely important. Yeah. No, no, no. I didn't say, I, t- I, I reject identity politics, but I am 
I I I think that um we you you can put too much focus. Okay, here 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 here. For here, sure, here, yes, here, I hear, here, I hear This you. is a good wording. It you can put too much focus in the symbolism. Okay, of obviously course. some you know that's I mean, dude, I have a YouTube channel with visual aesthetics and shit. Like uh, of course I I know that like you know like visuals and symbolism uh, is important for like you know like advertising and shit like that and getting people on board, but um. I'm not into symbolism when it comes to like, oh, I want a black president or, oh, I want to like, I don't give a fuck. If it's a white person, it could be a fucking who <laughs> anybody. If they're up there and they're helping poor black people, then that's all I care about at this point. You know, it's just like there's no if you were actually living in the fucking hood with these people like I am, um, anyone listening like or, or anyone that if you're hearing this shit or, or that's the difference when, when you when you're actually living in this shit. There's no fucking. You just get fed up with this shit. It is dis. It literally makes me sick to my stomach to see like there is such this support and you know for Joe Biden and like Kamala Harris and and shit like that. Like um, you know the thing. It's just like it's almost like this is worse off. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like like almost having a black VP is worse off <laughs> for these people because they we, some people kind of think like oh like. Like, like, oh, it's at least, you know, it's better that the person is black, but I think I, and they, they think it's not as bad as it actually is. It's like, um, you know, it's, it's like, a, it's like nasty policies with a pretty face. And I think that's more dangerous than just uh, nasty policies with, a, you know, just an old white guy having nasty policies. I think it's way more dangerous to have a black woman have nasty policies. You know what I'm saying? That's way more. I, I agree with you. I 100% agree with you. How do you, how did you feel about, a uh... Ava DuVernay's Instagram post. Did you um, see that? Who is that again? Remind me. Ava is the director of Lemon. Of a uh, no. Oh, did she direct Lemon? Um, Lemon. did she fuck with Brett uh, Gelman? She, she directed Thirteen, the big Netflix movie on mass incarceration, and then you Jim Crow. Oh, okay. I don't know who this woman she also, is. She also did a uh, When They See Us on Netflix. She did Selma. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. She's like the black director. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, she is. Fuck. Netflix, and then, baby. And then her, her Instagram post went kind of viral. Just a super day. rich black woman. All of my all of my black film friends were resharing this shit yesterday, or the other day. Oh, no. And I was just like, you guys just lost. Oh so many no! Points. You guys just lost so many points with me. <laughs> Everyone... People are dying. Someone I love died. This virus <laughs> is real. And if it has, it's like, oh yeah, Kamala Harris is gonna fucking help with that. Yeah, Kamala Harris. Oh, is that's the fucking... funny. <laughs> you know what's funny is like Trump actually, Trump actually probably has given people way more, like probably literally twice as more. Um, uh, like checks and shit, uh, coronavirus relief than Democrats probably would have. Um, I mean, Democrats are just specifically cynical and evil when it comes to money. And I mean, Trump is an outsider. Trump is not like a establishment. You know, he's not like a politician, Republican. Yeah, we we knew that he was a shithead going in. Like we knew that he was just like just an evil person. We didn't we didn't expect. Like literally, someone high. said like like, and it's actually a good argument. Like <clears throat> like. What would actually help black people be like Medicare for all? And like, funny enough, you'd probably have like, okay, you know, it's funny. Trump has never said uh, he's uh, anti-Medicare for all. In fact, it was actually on his options list. Like he was considering it when the coronavirus first happened. And um, like, I've seen the argument been made. and It's a good argument because they they give good points, which is like the argument is uh, it goes like this. Like if you want to help black people and, you know, if you want Medicare for all, you want to help people. um you might have an easier time getting that passed through Donald Trump than Biden because Biden has specifically said he is anti Medicare for all. I, you can see videos of it. He, he is, he, he, uh, someone asked him, a reporter asked him, they said, Look, what if everyone in Congress got the bill or the, the bill was ready to be signed? You know, like, if, um, if everything, if, if, if uh, most of Congress wanted it and it came down to you, would you veto it? He said, yes, I would not vote for, I would veto Medicare for all. I will, I will not do Medicare for all. Donald Trump's never said that shit. Um, 
So the argue, I mean, there's literally a good argument. You might have a better time fucking passing Medicare for all through Trump than Biden. That's how specifically right wing uh, Democratic establishment Joe Biden is. Yeah, and we can see that reflected. In, uh, we can see that reflected in the DNC platform, um, not supporting Medicare for all, and not supporting the, <laughs> to bring an end. Oh to yeah, did you see that vote, dude? It was literally like. It was absurd. Yeah, yeah. Not even not even half, not even close, dude. Just just overwhelmingly the Democrats fucking hate poor people. Just overwhelmingly no one voted for that fucking shit. And I and I have Pretty friends funny. that come up to me and like adamantly bring that up as a point. Like Trump is gonna take healthcare away from people. Mind you, like these like the people that are saying this to me don't know that I haven't been to a hospital since I was a kid. You know, like I haven't I haven't received any of this care. Right, like they, and they fucking... have, and they have, and they're telling me that they're worried about pe- people like me losing healthcare. And it's like, bitch, like this shit hasn't been working for <laughs> people like me anyway. Yeah, like, way before Trump. Way before Trump, and like the the party that you're trying to vote in doesn't want to see it get much better either. So that's like a mute. That's like a mute point for me. Like that's not. That's not. Uh, it doesn't budge me either way, in terms of healthcare. Um. Because like it's 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 just so stupid that the majority of people, when polled, want this thing. Like, mm-hmm. and we're in a global pandemic, and they can't even like, they can't even perform that they want it. They can't even like suggest it because they know that they would actually have to follow through if they if they were to just say, utter it. Like if they were just to say it, just to say it and make people happy, like they would never be able to take it back. Uh, that's another thing I, I was thinking about is how like. There, there was two moments uh, this week where people were pressed, uh, like outright about lies that they told or like flip flopping on stuff. The first one was with uh, Colbert and Kamala. On um, it was a debate. <laughs> oh, that was fucking hilarious. <laughs> Which when I first saw it, I thought it was a deep fake. I was just like, "Is this even a real clip?" Like it doesn't literally deep faked. Yeah, right. It looked deep fake, and then um, and then Trump has been getting pressed. Like uh, left and right in the in the press briefing, this one guy was like, "Are you gonna ever stop lying to the American people?" And he's and he's and you sort of see him short circuit. And then uh, yesterday there was someone who uh, asked him about the QAnon governor or whatever or congresswoman, I forget what it is, but he just sort of like ignores her and short circuits and like keeps going. I th- I think it's so crazy. Like when you actually press these people. And like try to get an actual answer with them. They just won't. They just won't answer you, and keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? Like Colbert went on to support Kamala after that, and it's just like yeah, it's, it's just promo for her now. Even though like that, like what do you like? Like in, in real life, if you ask someone a question like that and they don't have an answer, you cut that person out of your life. <laughs> in, <laughs> in, in, real, in real life, you're just like, oh, okay, don't come around my house anymore. And don't sadly <laughs> politics isn't real life at this point. It's not real, you know what I'm saying? It has yeah. no we have no actual influence over that too. It's a di- it's a different world. So it's like I always try to remind myself that this is all fantasy. And like <laughs> when we're think when we're thinking about it and when we're processing this stuff, it's like it's a thought experiment. And then there's the real life real world stuff that we have to do to sort of uh, keep it moving. It just sucks that when you're trying to make art or whatever, or trying to make media, those two worlds kind of blend together. Whereas, like, if I was working at Walmart, I can just, like, fucking shut my brain off and work at Walmart. <laughs> and just, like, fucking work at a restaurant, just cook the food and then go home. But no, we, right. have, to, we have to sit here and read all this bullshit and watch all this bullshit because we're fucking... You have to put your heart into it. We're psychopaths, and we're fucking <laughs> tuned. Yeah, it's in. literally psychopath shit. It, yeah, yeah, we're, we're mental illness for sure. No, but imagine like you know you were like us, like you you were like like you put all this time into this shit, but you were like a liberal, like you were like a Gwen Snyder. Um, Dude, like oh, you literally took time my... out of your day to <laughs> you take time <laughs> you take time out of your day to um. Well, that's what I say. I guess I'm a fucking nobody, but I guess I'm this fucking crazy cultural 
icon, an underground cultural icon. But uh, you, you know, that? according to according to Gwen Snyder or whatever. But you take time out of your day to literally look at someone's Twitter account that literally has like two hundred and eighty something followers to like. Okay, so for people that don't know, I I got canceled by Gwen Snyder and um. He, she, we, we, she, did, we made it we made it big time yeah we finally hit it big no but um <laughs> <laughs> she this is the post i'll read it out loud okay the caption okay okay the, the she posts two pictures <laughs> oh my god i can't even okay she posts two pictures uh two <laughs> screenshots one is a screenshot of my tweet <laughs> where I just go leaked photo of Joe Biden and it's this like old black dude like in bed naked with this black chick um and oh my god and that was before kamala harris holy shit i posted that before kamala harris that was like a prophecy right there and then um wow i actually posted that before kamala the kamala harris uh vp uh pick that's actually hilarious um and uh um she she goes to my followers like I'm talking about like this bitch is fucking or she is literally <laughs> she is literally fucking scrubbing through my shit dog like she goes Listen, my who, who i'm can following you blame her? can you blame her dude come on We've oh all yeah i mean you have nothing else to do oh i mean come on yeah this is your this is your thing this is how you make your money um she goes that she screenshots who i'm following and and it's like <laughs> it's just fucking matt virgil um like i'm just like happy following them and then it's like and then she 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 Okay, she posts those two screenshots, you know, the the Joe Biden meme, and then who I'm following, and then goes, LOL. Okay, she's quoting someone, uh, being ironic. LOL, Gwen is crazy. Chapo Trap House fans aren't racist. <laughs> oh my god! And when and when everyone's shitting on her, when all when we're all shitting on her on Twitter, when I when I um screenshotted her post and I posted on my Twitter, um, like. Like, just immediately, I am just in the comments, just like, imagine calling a person of color like myself a racist, uh, crying eyes emoji, and then a uh, dollar sign, like, fucking emoji. <laughs> Fuck it, um, man, no, I should really drill that in, shouldn't I? Should I try to cancel her for calling a black man like myself racist? I think, I think absolutely, yeah, she needs to be clocked. She, she needs to be clocked. Fully, she needs to be yeah, fully bro. readjusted, especially like as a you white woman. You need to woman. share this episode on Instagram and get a mob of people, all your all your liberal followers that are trying to cancel you, and be like, "Look, no, 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 you actually no. want to cancel somebody? You I'm need not, to cancel this woman." I don't. I'm not about sicking any mob on any person. No, yeah, you need that. to sick your mob. Sick, sick your mob on her. Sick your mob on her. My, I don't have a mob. Sicker, sicker, I have sicker. A, <laughs> I have community support, and what, and I will call upon the community. <laughs> To protect, you know, another member of the community. That's that's protect totally me. fair. Exactly. We need to protect each other. And like especially from from white women on Twitter, you know White women on Twitter. <laughs> claiming claiming to fight the good fight and like are dragging our own through the mud, you know? Like who are you? Literally like, called me a racist, dog. Who I are cannot. you, white woman? Who are you, white woman? Who who even is Gwen Snyder? And how did she even like come up on our radar? Do you know what I'm saying? In all seriousness, if you thought the barely veiled <laughs> racism of the dirtbags was bad before, get ready to watch their masks dropping like flies. Not that Kamala is the nominee. Um, what's wild is that they can't even be bothered to backtrack on the cop standing. I have no... <laughs> what's wild? Bro, like they're, they're already barely... Okay, no, 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 no. Here's the best part. Trevor, Trevor, Trevor. Here's the best part. We gotta edit this at the front. We gotta we gotta put an in front the intro because this is fucking hilarious. This is Gwen Snyder, a white woman, trying to call me a person of color, uh, um, racist, and, I, and I'm and I'm half black here. So yeah, get all the oppression points in. Okay, are you guys ready? Quote this from her. They're, she's talking about me. <laughs> They're already very nearly at full on calling Biden, quote, inward lover without ever even bothering to pause and be <laughs> like, quote, oh, right. Hating cops is supposed to be our excuse for being racist towards her, end quote. So uh, they're, uh, they're ready to call Biden an inward lover 
bitch, who the fuck are you? Who like, the wait. fuck invited? What the fuck are you well, talking listen, about? Why the listen. fuck are you on my page? Why are you on Twitter? Listen, listen, why are listen. you? Why are you? What are you doing? What? What? Listen, listen. What we need to talk about is how she. How did how did she get from this image that you were calling him an N word lover? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> where, like who is calling her an oh N word anywhere in this? In where this the post? fuck is are you getting that from, Gwen? Please. Gwen, who brought up the oh N word here? Like, why are you oh, so quick? Genius. I knew yeah. that this was gonna be gold. I knew that this was gold, Why right? So that we struck gold. I to knew pull it. Out the N word, and, and to weaponize it against this young man who happens to be black. You didn't know that. Oh then, my when, god! When you didn't How know that. Badly can you fuck up there? You didn't know the full spectrum of blackness, Glenn. You didn't know what. We, <laughs> you didn't know what. You didn't know how far black. <laughs> Gwen. Oh, she fucked up, boys. We're gonna get her, boys. We're taking and her down, so, finally. And so, Gwen, after you listen to this, because I know you will listen oh, to it. Oh, she better listen. Oh, yeah, she's probably, she is scrubbing through my YouTube, this is, my this is the most SoundCloud, attention. my Patreon. Listen, we are giving her the most attention that she's ever gotten. Ever going to get in the rest of her life. Especially from two black people. Let's get that straight. Yeah. <laughs> So listen, Glenn, after you... <laughs> this is the most attention by any amount of blackness of people that have blackness in their genes that you will get in your life mathematically. So, so after Holy you, shit. <laughs> so, so after you come down from your from this N-word podcast high trip thing that you get off listening to us process... This is white terrorism right here. This is what I'm talking about. Where white people just get to go on any platform repost and reblog black people and pro and like and and you think that you this is this is violence here like that we even have to think about this you know what i'm saying like we're over here trying to strategize and think about like how do we make politics more palatable pal palatable for black people mm -hmm. and we have to fucking first sit gwen down yeah and let, and let her know how dumb she is just because we have to do this anyway thank you gwen for for wasting our time. <laughs> That's what it comes well, down to. Thing is, I only talk about these stories because I think they're emblematic of like larger problems. Um, sure, sure. Gwen is a huge problem. There are so many Gwen. Well, do you know? Okay, so look, so look. Political journalism or like any kind of commentary, commentating business, there's always these like, okay, so like it works as like, um, there are these feelings that are being felt. And there was this kind of feeling of like, oh, you know, these uh, Adolf Reed type, you know, materialist type leftists. These people actually hate black people and they're all racist. And there was this feeling that was being felt a little bit or whatever for kind of a small minority or whatever. P crazy fucking white woman. Um, <laughs> and then one of these crazy white women goes Bing! in her in her head. And it's like, oh, my God, I can make money by calling black people racist. Um, I can make money by, by calling Chapo Trap House racist and, uh, and, and all this shit. And the thing is, my interesting thing is like, um, she's made kind of a career. She has a Patreon. I'm pretty sure she has like a, a nicely funded Patreon page. Like no, sh like, like no bullshit. Um, and this is a career. I mean, these people are turning these things and, and when you're already making money, like, like she's not going to backtrack on any of these statements, you know? Um, that would be backtracking on all this money that she made and all of her followers and everything. And it's like, I don't know. It's just white liberalism. Um, and, uh, yeah, man, isn't that interesting? And, and like, really isn't, isn't that funny? Like she feels to, she feels the need to be like the, uh, the, the, the leader of, you know, <laughs> of, of, of helping black people by calling out the fascists. Because she's a cop. She's a liberal cop, and I hope that she's yeah, not trans. working with the CIA or some kind of shit. I, and I really hope that you're a fucking cis, too, because if you're trans, you make all trans people look bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> fucking yeah. cop. Yeah. The trans no, it's like, has no it's like, it's like, cops. look, it's like, look, like, 
and I have a lot of trans friends and shit like that. So it's like, I know it's like, look, like, like I, I also hope she's not trans either because they're not in a good spot right now. And they do not yeah. need people like Gwen <laughs> Snyder on their side. <laughs> exactly, bro. They are trans not people, in a good spot right now. Trans people oh. do not appreciate this behavior. I, I can promise you that. I can oh, yeah, you. no, I will take her on my <laughs> Discord and she can <laughs> see that she, um, yeah. No, yeah, right. Or like, I don't know, what will you be quickerly can't what what can you what, who's gonna get canceled quicker? Her um her like like being racist or um like or someone being transphobic like what would be what would be can't more cancelable in this oh, little we're, fucking we're, hell world we're in right now you already know you already know the answer to that white women can't get canceled apparently so white oh, women exactly. can't get canceled unless they uh they say the same shit a white guy said but <laughs> you know i don't you know, know. And this all ties in too because this ties in with the uh alex morse uh, i think that's how you pronounce his right. last name um yeah. story which is bizarre. It's actually pretty insane. Like, um, I mean, it's not crazy like, when you think about it. It's just disgusting. I know, right? I it's like it's like it's like I'm surprised this actually doesn't happen like way more. Um, but no, the thing is, is he he's he's young. He does not have a lot of political power like his opponents that are trying to fucking uh, put this sexual allegation on him. And there's really not a lot he can do. Um because he doesn't have any power. So like small people that have like leftist values, like he does that are anti-capitalist, you, you, you get, you get shut up real fucking quick. Oh yeah. Throw a sexual allegation on them. Throw a fucking racist allegation on them. Throw a transphobic allegation on them. Oh yeah. You'll get shut up real fucking quick. And then you, and then when you learn and find out that these kids, these MA Democrats, college Democrats were like talking to the Adam Neal campaign since October of last year, it just puts like a very, very nasty feeling in your stomach that like these people want to. It also to... scares the fuck out of me of how easy that is, so man. Easy. It's so easy. And um, you, know what? It ha- you know it happens all the time. And you know what's so crazy? These people are supposed to be woke or whatever, but like they are literally using the fact that he is gay to leverage these sexual allegation claims. Like, oh, he's talking to younger people because the whole thing was like the the allegation was that he was like talking to college students or whatever and like he's preying on younger younger guys or whatever and it's like this horribly fucking homophobic and it's so this is what i mean by liberalism is like capitalist realism and liberalism and neoliberalism you know like this shit is so strong that these people openly fucking openly over and over again contradict themselves openly publicly like they see themselves contradicting themselves, but it's just this, it is this all powerful, like ever emerging being of like cloud that just fucking literally eats up everything in its path. And then in, in any semblance of truth or, or like, uh, or, or passion to discover the truth, it just fucking rips it away from these people. And it's just like, you know, it, it turns it, it turns it into like the Twitter mob and the canceling. And oh, if you're a racist, you know, I you're overwit, you're transphobe, you're overweight, or sexual allegations. It's like that's how fucking it easy it is to cut people off, cut people's like careers off. You know, yeah. especially if you're a young journalist or a young a young politician, um, and you don't have a lot of power and a lot of money. What the fuck are you supposed to do when you're completely at the whim of this liberal fucking, uh? I I literally I literally the only thing I could say it's literally like fucking a, some kind of like authoritarian like mob mentality like you know cancel cult or just like this thing where people people kind of snap into this uh into snap into line Twitter I it's actually super crazy because Twitter is really good at letting you know what's what's right to say and what's not right to say and it will snap you in line very quickly. And it will it will line up all your friends or whoever. Like if you put them through the system, it will tell you what side you're on. You mean like the the community on Twitter or Twitter the platform itself? Um, like because I've been like, seeing a lot of like, like the, the algorithm, the algorithm of these apps in general, like um, uh, are are prone to you know like there's a lot of research about this. They're prone to making echo chambers, and um, <coughs> right. you know so. But uh, 
the thing is, it's like these these Silicon Valley things and, and Silicon Valley and like um the the people who make these uh, apps and, and these giant softwares are liberals, you know, and, and are like part of neoliberalism. Um, so it's like almost not that surprising or whatever, but uh, it is pretty interesting. And like, you know, like, um, like it's very quickly, like, like very easily Twitter and Instagram, and these apps can show you, let's say you're an actor or whatever. It can show you what the correct take is. And you know what's not the fucking correct take. What's going to get you canceled? And it's just, you, you would, I don't know. I, for some, I just, I'm, I'm interested in how, and how clear the lines are kind of with some of these things um, and how it, it, it really does keep away any real criticism and how effective it is at doing it. Like how literally like Jules Deleuzian fucking societies of control type shit, like how, it's like these systems function on themselves. Like people, people do it without even someone forcing them to. Yeah. And another, another thing I was thinking about too is um, it's it, the sort of opposite effect happens where the people that are like pushing against this sort of uh, this culture of like policing people's language and like canceling people, they will actively like every post they make will be like, I know this is going to get me canceled, but da 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 da, and they'll sort of like lean into this angle of like everything I say gets me canceled. I'm gonna just like I'm just gonna keep talking about the same issues rather than like actively try to find common ground and like bring people together. They will sort of posture themselves as like doesn't doesn't matter what I say because I'm gonna get canceled. So here's some more fuel for the flame, and it, and it made me think of like the same sort of thing that we see on TikTok where like you we we see these kids like watching the algorithm and watching um what gets this, what gets them more views and what gets them more likes and you can like visually see it like when you scroll through their profile like how their videos change from like oh change over time and like what they start to f- tend to focus on exactly they, they start focusing but that's what i was saying like these apps um specifically encourage uh this kind of um this kind of debate and this kind of like argue this this this, yeah. this polarization pull this pull this polarization it specifically encourages this polarization because these I mean I mean I, like you said a lot of these people are literally kids or, or 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 you know like young adults um and these are people that are like oh my god I can start my career I can make money doing this uh if I just say the right things and um. The bad thing about these apps is like if you want to make money talking about politics or any of this shit, you have to have a Twitter. And if you're on Twitter, you realize if you want views and you want to make money, always argue with people. Never try to make always common ground. Yeah. No one's going to go to your Patreon. Like like, like kids out there if, if or anyone listening to me that wants to start talking about politics. If you – if you know, you have two options. Either, either do what you think is right. And be a fucking, you know, just just some idiot that 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 doesn't make any money. Um, and you're just blabbling to fucking five people, you know, that come and go from your fucking YouTube stream or whatever. Or or just constantly make the polarization art, you know, and always make an enemy and always talk about the enemy. That makes you way more fucking money. Because these apps specifically um like push you towards that kind of thinking. Right. Yeah, that, you saw that meme I posted uh, up at 3 a.m. watching an argument between two people. Oh, that was funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll post that. Like you, you wake up, you wake up in the middle of the night, and you're like, oh, shit, I just missed all of this shit. I just <laughs> missed all of this go down. Easy bait, easy clicks, easy views. All press is good press. You know, and that's why yeah, and there, it's a, there's never like a limit. There's never like a oh, I'll get big first and then I'll talk about what I want. No, you'll never get as big as you want to be. You'll never make as much money as you want. You know, you always want more and more, more views, more clicks. Preach, dude. You're a preacher, huh? You're a fucking preacher, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm fucking, uh, I'm fucking mushmouth, bro. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh yeah, I have a uh, um, religious training. So I've been studying the Bible. I've been studying the Bible. I have. Good. 
I'm going through Genesis real with a fine t with a with a fine comb. You want to become Catholics? I can't, I want to be Jewish. I want to be. <laughs> Yeah, dude, then you'll never be canceled. You're black and you're a Jew. Exactly. I want to marry a beautiful, rich Jewish person. I want it to be a polyamorous a relationship. Beautiful New York Jew. Exactly. Oh, I love that. No, I want a Philadelphia Jew. The Philadelphia that's why, Jew. That's why I got Philly on my wrist. You fell in love with a Philly Jew out in Philly? He came to, he came to me. Oh, really? Yeah. All all my boys come to me. This is over the internet. <laughs> no, this is Have through you been to Philly? No, this is through uh, this is through film film world. Oh, really? Oh, you're talking about some real shit here. Okay, well, shout yeah. out to uh, our boy in Philly. We'll we'll probably cut this out of the podcast. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna you're editing it, then. Okay, you're editing it. You're editing this Bro, episode, dude. Chill out. I, I hate listening back to this shit, dude. I do too. It's the worst hearing yourself talk. Yeah, but you're the you're the podcaster. You're the one making this happen. I'm and I literally talk like a fucking retard. No, nah, dude, chill. We don't use the R word. Oh, we're gonna have to cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> that's the forgot, you know what? forgot we were recording. That's the that's all I will concede to these people is I, I won't say the R word, but all the you other just words. Just said the R word on the last episode, bro. I will tr I will I will know that I'm wrong when I say the R word, but all the other words I'm right. Are you retarded? I you know what I think that I am. I am too. So okay, then we can say it. Sounds so angry. Fucking pissed over this woke scolding cancel culture liberal bullshit. <laughs> Trying to censor my language. Dude, censorship, bro. Dude, they're authoritarian fascists, bro. They're trying to censor us, bro. We're right libertarians, bro. Right wing libertarians, bro. Oh, yeah, I was joking to my friends. I told them that I'm going to start calling myself a right populist. <laughs> oh, my God, I hate that. Don't do it. No, I, I'm so close to just being like, no, Please I'm a band. Was... I'm leaving the left. I'm leaving the left. I, I'll stop like, talking I, to you. I'm going to, like, I'm, I'm going to be like, like, look, realistically, if I was to do that, I would be like, look, I'm not a Trump supporter, but I'm a right populist. I'm on the right. I'm so fucking in disdain and disgust with the modern left. The liberalization of the modern left that I am switching sides. I will stop talking to you if you actively call yourself that. Because <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. It's yeah, true. I know. To yeah. actively call yourself that, I think that's goofy. Yeah. And there is such a religious tone to there's such a religious thing, like 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 even like like i like if I was to seriously say that, I would have like I have like super like serious fans that actually fuck with what I'm talking about, and they're pretty smart, and they're like anti-religion and anti-ideology bullshit. But to hear that, they would be like kind of upset, you know? It's like um because there's just a religious feeling. It's almost like your son comes to you and tells you he's an atheist. You're like, oh, you're not a leftist, or you know, you're not a Christian. You know what I'm saying? Like, how dare you? You know, that's it's literally like a religious yeah. thing. See, my whole thing is I'm anti-religion, dog. I'm a Marxist, dog. I'm a secular Marxist, dog. I don't fuck with that religion shit. You still, uh, we're still in like the drug cult gang, though. So you still, you still, you still accept the tribal human. Oh well, tribal. Uh, yeah. Says the literal fucking like cult leader. Yeah. Well, hey, you know, I I believe in cults. I think cults are exactly. Good. Yeah. No. Look, if 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 these fucks and politics and all these fucks are gonna use religion, I'm gonna use my I'm gonna use my religious power. Fuck them. I'm gonna run a cult. I'm gonna run my own cult. But this cult's cool. <laughs> this is a good cult. <laughs> this cult's cool. This is a cool cult, guys. This cult's cool. Join Dude, my cult, uh, guys. Join my cult, my internet cult. Dude, I'm I see the cult leader. Your Discord's really cool. It's I I enjoy seeing you run a Discord. We gotta I appreciate that. Everybody, shout out to the Discord. We need more people in there. 
But no, I also want to keep it small too, though. Like I like literally having like less Nigga, than. A, don't worry, it's it's than small. a couple hundred. But I want to actually <laughs> keep it small, though. I literally like I only want like a hundred people in there, and I I almost have a hundred people in there. Like literally, actually, like like yeah. If you really fuck with this, get in there because I am going to like lock it up at one point. And if you're not already in, you're you know. Can you talk about why you like it small? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That wasn't a joke. Um, <laughs> um, because I hate money. I'm anti-capitalist, and I do not want to make money. No, I'm just playing. Um, <laughs> because no, I believe in like small, strong base. Like, especially for just shit right now. You know, like I might want to release films, and like if you release a film, like like a feature film, like of course I want as many people to see it as possible. But like. There are just like certain levels of discussion. Like I, I wouldn't put my film. I wouldn't put complex. You know, like um, just like waste. Or, but it, it's just like there's certain levels of discussion to where, and also if you just have too many people, you can't. You know, it's like um, you know, we we don't want cops in there and shit. I mean, there's just a number of reasons to why you want like you want like real. You you know, you want like a small kind of uh. And also, there's like a there's like a weird thing with that, isn't it? It's like in music and all of that. Like, it's way cooler to have like a small fan base, like a small but like real fan base, rather than like you're just a pop star or to have no fan base at all. It's like better to have like a medium sized, like cool little fan base. Hell yeah! You don't Hell want to yeah, be too brother. popular. Yeah, you want you want people trying to get in. Exactly, exactly. And we want to, we want free spots, we want raffles for spots, you know, you gotta pay to get in. Like, like, like there are certain things that I probably write, like, eventually, that I, like, will want, like, like, hell of as many people as possible to see. But then there are certain things that I write to where I'm just literally like, yeah, I don't care if, you know, some regular guy in America watches my Uncut Gems video. He'll fucking look at it and fucking, like, throw up um if you're an average person like all these fucking like fucking words that you have no fucking idea like some literal some things literally are meant for a small audience like there's literally just only a like a like a limited amount of number of people that are even into this shit in the first place you know what i'm saying yeah, absolutely. Um, so i don't know it's just kind of complex yeah it's a good answer though yeah, and it's it's yeah, yeah, and it it's more nuanced than that too, though, because it's not just like oh, we just want like I don't know though. People get it. It is cooler to fucking like <laughs> it's cooler. It's just cooler to have like a small base. And I'm trying uh, to be as cool as possible here. I just want to be cool. I just want to have a podcast and people be like, yo, yo, yeah, this is dope, bro. You gotta check out these guys' podcast. You know what's so a- funny? You know what's so funny is I was forced to start a podcast, like. I really just, like, I took my, so, like, look, I was writing blogs, and I had, like, 10 people fucking care for what I said, and then I got in the bread tube. I think someone even recommended it to me, like, hey, dude, you should turn these into, like, like, videos and post them on YouTube, whatever, like, 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 uh, it's big right now, and it, you'll get more, more views, and it made a lot of sense, and I did that, and then that's really where I got, like, an audience of people was turn, going to, like, this fucking, you know, bread tube shit and appropriating the, the stupid little bread tube craze or whatever and writing what I want to write about. Um, and I turned them into videos or whatever. And then, like, through that, I had people just literally, like, beg me to make a fucking podcast. They're like, dude, it's easy. Just record yourself. You know, the whole thing is, like, um, people just want extra shit to watch, you know, or extra shit to listen to, extra content. And yeah, um, I, always, I, I, always I, I love more. the podcast medium because it's like good to discuss like the shit that we're talking about right now. Like some of these things can't be put in the video essay, but they can be talked about and laughed about. I'm always looking for more content to fucking shove up my throat. There's never. Oh, yeah. Enough. Content crazy. Mm-mm-mm. Well, anything else you want to talk about, dude? As far as um, mm. as far as podcast, let me look at that list. Oh, you remember? You know that Obama said the N word too, right? Um. Oh, I put Obama N word instead of Biden N word. No, I wrote. Oh, that you N-word. put that? Yeah, because he also. Yeah, yeah. No. Oh, he did. 
Yeah, in like 2015 or some shit. What on context the, was it? On the, it was the Mark Marin podcast. And uh, oh my god, that fucking guy! I forget. I forget exactly what, what the context was. We'll we'll just maybe we'll save it for next time. But I think it's funny that uh, yeah, Obama said it too. And I think he I think he knew that it would be like a big thing. But he was like, I want to be cool. I want to be the cool president on a podcast. Oh, yeah. You know, he has like a podcast that he, he comes or his uh, Michelle Obama has a podcast and her first guest was Brock. Oh, I need to go listen to that. I'm you not going to do... fucking listen to that. <laughs> you're not going to listen to it, dude. It already kind of came out too, like a while ago. Well, not a while ago, but a while ago in media times. Internet time. Are you taking a piss right now on the podcast? Yeah, I do that all the time. Dude, what the fuck? You don't pee on the podcast. I be podcast shitting on the podcast, all that. <laughs> oh my god, dude. So whenever you guys are hearing me talk about like, you know, maybe I might be talking about complex political theory, I'm probably taking a, a dookie. I think our our listeners are probably into that shit. Oh, okay. hell yeah. This is they're like, they're like specifically listening for like me like grunting and shit or like fucking like me wiping my ass like listening. <laughs> oh my god. That I think that would take the podcast to the next level if you're just wiping your ass every time. If you're just using the restroom. 